Is it your watercolor technique that's your problem? That's my question. Students worry a lot about technique, and on some level, that's rightfully so. It is an important piece of the pie, but I would argue it's not the most important piece. My name is Stephen Berry, and I'm a professional watercolor artist. I'm based out of Vallejo, which is in the San Francisco Bay Area. And in this three-part series, I am going to be taking you through the key elements that you are going to need to focus on to improve your watercolor work. I think everybody wants to feel in the flow, like they've got some command of the medium. And I'm sure you know, you want successful results in the end. Everything comes down to that. Everything else is just talk, right? If the results aren't what you're wanting. And you know, everybody wants to be able to share their work or sell their work, you know, frame it, gift it. And the goal is to get you to that point. So technique. At the beginning of your journey as a watercolor artist, I think that we're all focused on a lot of problems like how do I preserve the white? in my paper better, right? How do I work wet into wet? Uh, how to get the colors to work together? It's just a mishmash on my paper. And I think those are all important things. Um, they're definitely all things that we cover in my signature class from photo to final painting, right? We talk about wet into wet painting and, um, how it's a great tool for, uh, decoding and applying notans. We talk about uh, color mixing and how to navigate the color wheel and, but also how to use color, right? But all those kinds of things, they're essential. They're important. How can you make marks if you're not having control of your brush and the paper? But it's not what I would say is the most important thing, right? Technique is fine, but as they say, you know, when you don't know technique, it's all you can really think about. But once you have a command of technique, nobody cares <laughs> because it's time to get on with the, you know, the journey of painting. And that's just your tools for making marks. It's not how you arrange them or what the final results are going to be from when you start painting. The problem goes deeper than technique. Um, right. Uh, I've definitely heard from students and I experienced this myself as a student. Uh, and maybe this describes you, it, you, you can paint in a class and you know, the teacher gives you a project. They give you some input on how to navigate it and, and, you know, apply your strokes and apply your washes. And if you do that, oh, you get pretty good results. You look at it and you think, well, it's not the Mona Lisa, but like I can paint, not a bad painting, but when you get down to painting on your own, well, the results are not as successful and that that's the real kernel of the problem, right? Is that I think everybody wants to get to that part where you can paint independently of a teacher or a class. You want to relate to the world as an artist. You want to connect your vision of how you're experiencing beautiful moments and beautiful spaces and amazing light. And you want to be able to bring it into the paper on your own, right? I think that's what we're all interested in. But the secret thing that's going on when you're taking that class and you don't know about it is, or you haven't thought about it yet, is that the teacher is secretly <laughs> composing those images that you are painting and they're discarding ones that they think, meh, that's not such a good photo. This is a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's got strong bones. They can paint this. I'm going to work on their technique with them. And as long as they follow the technique properly, they're going to get a reasonable painting out of this subject. And the problem is that your own photos don't have strong bones. So Right. I have definitely uh, a lot of um, 
I've had students bring their reference photos to me and they're struggling to get them to come alive. And either sometimes I'll look at it and I'm not surprised you're having a hard time with this. This is not a compelling photo. You're going to be duking it out the whole way with this photo, right? You got to work at this photo so much to get it to work that it makes your life difficult. The reference photo is not compelling. Or they don't know how to alter the photo to bring life into it. And so they're stuck working with a photo that isn't really going to give them compelling results, no matter how good your technique is, right? So I like to think of the, the, the goal for the teaching experience is, is the fishing analogy, right? I want I don't want to just give you a fish and say, all right, we're going to paint this subject and I'm going to, here's how we're going to do it, right? I'm going to get you into the nuts and bolts of how to make this painting become beautiful. And you go home and you think, oh, this is great. I made a beautiful painting in this class. In my mind, the real goal is to teach you how to fish, right? You need to be able to paint on your own. Make art on your own. Go fishing on your own. So that is beyond technique. That goes into composition. And that is really the most important element. You know, your technique is always going to be improving. If you're painting, like that's the nature of it. My technique is improving. I'm developing, you know, and solving problems and growing my technique. And you would be too. And for sure. That's an important part. It's definitely a, an important part of from photo to final painting as well. You got to have technique. But the more important part is to develop your eye, to start thinking about your shapes, to start thinking about how you're going to simplify, you know, this crazy mess of activity, how to arrange your shapes to make them compelling, either how you're going to alter the photo or how you're going to make better photos to, you know, start at, um, ahead. It's basically to start ahead of a race. So that's the real goal, you know, is your watercolor technique the problem? And I'm going to say no. The real question is how are you choosing your subjects? That's the most important piece of the painting process is choosing a subject or altering it and simplifying it as need be to improve it, to make your painting dynamic. And that's what I'm going to leave you with today, um, is that if you really want to be an artist in the world, sharing your work with others, you, you need to get beyond technique and you need to get into composition and into thinking about how you're going to choose your subject, right? What makes a compelling photo? That's right. What makes a compelling reference photo? That's what we're going to talk about um, in the next video. So stay tuned and I will um, be back and uh, we will dive into what makes a compelling photo, right? That's the next step in that process um, in the next video. Bye-bye.